Okay, as we all know, the hyperbolic cosine function, or the cosh of x, this right here is e to the x plus e to the negative x all over 2. So this is the exponential version of that. And you can also graph this. You get a parabola looking, but this right here, it's not a parabola. I will tell you guys why later on. But for now, you have to remember, this is not, you know, ax squared plus bx plus c. It's not just that. But anyway, in this video, let's talk about the hyperbolic function more. And this time, we are going to get the inverse for the hyperbolic cosine function. I believe the hyperbolic functions, they do deserve more love. So let me do that with you guys. All right, so in order for us to make sense of that, you see, in order for me to get the inverse right here, this does not pass the horizontal line test. So if you rotate it, if you turn it, you see that it's not going to be a function unless you kind of restrict the domain. So I would like to say the domain so that this is going to have an inverse is the following. I am going to just cut the right hand side right here. So this part. So the domain to have inverse is from 0 to infinity. And let me just write it down. And then the range is, this is actually 1. When x is 0, you can try that out on your own. You get 1 to infinity. So this is the range, which is 1 to infinity. So you have to pay attention to the domain and the range, especially when you have a function that doesn't pass the horizontal line test. The idea is that if you think about x squared, the inverse of that is square root of x under the condition that x is greater than 0, right? So it's similar, but once again, this is not the quadratic function. Anyway, right here, well, we know the range of the original, it's a domain of inverse. So the domain of this is going to be 1 comma infinity, including the 1, of course. And for the range right here, it's pretty much a domain of the original. Namely, we have 0 to infinity. And we have to keep this in mind. And now, here we go. Let's do the math. Well, well, hmm. The original is with e to the something. So for the inverse, can we expect to have L of something? Yes. Hmm. I want to use this to help me out. And this is how we can do it. So I will just call this to be maybe like, okay, I'll call this to be y. So I will just put down y equals inverse hyperbolic cosine of x like this. And then on both sides, I will just take the original. So we see cosh of y is equal to just x. So they are the same thing. And the reason I want to do that is because on the left hand side now, I can just plug in y into this x and that x because I have the original cosh. And now this time, the input is just y. So I will just do that, and on the left hand side, I get e to the y plus e to the negative y all over 2, that's equal to x. And now from here, my goal is to get y by itself, because originally I said y is the inverse hyperbolic cosine. So if I can solve for y from here, I will be good to go, right? That's the expression for the inverse. Hmm, I will just multiply up by 2 on both sides, so I get e to the y plus e to the negative y equals 2x. And then this is technically 1 over e to the y. Therefore, let me just multiply everything by e to the positive y like that so that I can clear the fraction. And when you do that, this times that is just e to the 2y. And then this times that is plus 1. This times that is 2x e to the y. And notice I have e to the y here. And this is e to the 2y which is the same as e to the y squared. So this is a quadratic equation in terms of e to the y. So I will actually bring this to the other side, and I'll write this down as e to the y, and then I will square that for this, and then bring this to the other side, I get negative 2x times e to the y, and then I add a 1, and this is equal to 0, of course. And if you look at this, this is the quadrat this is a quadratic equation in terms of e to the y. So I'll pay attention to the ABC values. So I will write this down right here. This is my A, which is 1, and the 2x with a negative in the front is the B, and then the C is 1. So from here, in fact, we can solve this by using the quadratic formula. I will write down e to the y. It's going to be the following. Let me just put this down in red. Make it nice, make it pretty for you guys. And this is equal to, well, well, I need to get the quadratic formula, which is negative b 
and b is negative 2x, so let's put that down right here. And then we have the plus minus, and then we have the square root, and then we have to do the b square, which is negative 2x, and then we square that, and then we are going to subtract 4 times a and c. a is 1, and c is positive 1. So it's like this, which is really nice, and then all over 2 times a, which is 1, like that. So, so far so good. And now we can just clean things up a little bit. So on the left hand side, we still have e to the y, and this is equal to, this is positive 2x, and you might be wondering, okay, we have the plus minus. What should we do? Well, let's maintain it, and then later on I will tell you guys which one we are going to keep, and then we'll get rid of the other one. So we just keep it for now, we have the plus minus square root. You see, this is pretty much negative 2 squared, which is 4x squared, and this is minus 4, like that, and then divided by 2. And both of this, they have the 4 as a factor, so you can factor that 4 out. So in other words, this is 2x plus minus square root of 4 times x squared minus 1, and then divided by 2. And of course, when you multiply 4 with this quantity, this is as saying 2 times square root of x squared minus 1. And you have the 2 here, 2 here, 2 here, so you can just cancel them out. But technically, you factor things out and cancel out, but this is cal 2, or at least cal whatever. So just cancel this out. <laughs> so you see this is e to the y equals, we have x plus minus, and we have the square root of x squared minus 1, like that. It's over 1, so we didn't need to put on anything. Well, well, the last part is that we just take the natural log on both sides, and then we can get the y by itself. So let's do that right here, and also right here. So this and that cancel. On the left hand side, we get a y, and this is equal to ln of x plus minus square root of x squared minus 1. However, this is not it yet, because we still have the plus minus. And I know you guys will tell me, hey, just get rid of the negative. I know you guys hate on the negative for some reason. Yes, we are going to get rid of the negative, but we have to give a good reason. Now, we have to refer back to the domain range business again. So once again, originally, this function does not pass the horizontal line test, but we have to just... But the way to handle that is, we can just define from 0 to infinity, so that we can define this piece to have the inverse. So this piece, the domain to have inverse, is just from 0 to infinity, and this will tell you the range of the inverse. So, you see, the range has to go from 0 to infinity. And remember, range is the y values. And right now, we have the y values. We have to make sure that this expression right here has to be bigger than or equal to 0. So, this right here is what we need, right? And you see, we have ln of something to be greater than or equal to 0. You can just do e to this power, e to that power, that means we need to look at the inside here. We need the x plus minus square root of x squared minus 1 to be greater than or equal to 1. Ln of 1 is 0. Anything bigger than 1 inside will give you the whole thing to be bigger than or equal to 0. So you have two choices, right? The plus minus. But let me tell you, if you have the minus here, let me just write this down for you guys. The expression x minus square root of x squared minus 1 greater than or equal to 0, this right here is false. You can just quickly see this by using an example. You can plug in x equals 2, for example. When you plug in 2 right here, you get 2 minus square root of 3. This right here is not greater than or equal to 1. So this right here is false. Therefore, this right here is no good. Therefore, you have to get rid of the negative. Therefore, you have to get rid of the negative right here. So we see that y, which is the same as the inverse hyperbolic cosine, is equal to this now. Therefore, the inverse hyperbolic cosine is just that. So let me write this down. The inverse hyperbolic cosh function is equal to natural log of x plus square root of x squared minus 1, like this. Of course, you also should include the domain, and the domain is going from 1 to infinity. So I will just write this down on the interval, x is greater than or equal to 1. Therefore, this is it right here, and we are all done.
So hopefully you guys all like this video and come on next, I'll show you guys how to differentiate the inverse hyperbolic cosh function. So hopefully you guys all like this video and let me know if you guys have any questions and if you guys are new to my channel, please subscribe. And as always, that's it.